Thank you, Mayor. Let us pray. Our most gracious God and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, a day of sunshine, a day of briskness, and it reminds us that you're the creator of all things. As we close out winter and usher in spring, I pray, Lord, that uh, we would be mindful of your will for us, your graciousness to us, and that we would seek your will in all things that we do. Thank you, Lord, for the people of this community. I pray that you continue to bless us and keep us safe. And thank you, Lord, for those who serve our city and uh, keep things moving, keep the infrastructure going, and keep us safe from, uh, from peril. As we go in this meeting tonight, Lord, I pray that uh, we would be mindful of the wisdom you would impart upon us and all things be pleasing to your sight. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, would you conduct roll call? Aldridge. Here. Collins. Here. Dickerson. Here. Earhart. Here. Hamilton. Here. Henderson. Here. Wallace. Here. Thank you all present, 100% present. So obviously we do have a quorum. Uh, Boards you have before you, you've had through the weekend our regular minutes uh, from our March the 5th meeting. Uh, that was held our uh, last meeting, last stated meeting. Any questions about the minutes or any any comments, questions, or motions? Motion to approve. Ms. Hamilton, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Collins, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Following our agenda, we have uh, with us tonight representative from the sports facilities companies who uh, the board we've contracted with at your approval uh, to study our parks and rec program, uh, to take a market survey, uh, a couple hundred mile radius around Olive Branch, survey our residents as well to determine where we need to be headed with our uh, rec and competitive sports. And we're fortunate to have uh, two of their representatives in tonight that are going to uh, address you, give you a brief update and take any questions from the board uh, at this time, I believe. Reps, come forward, please. Ms. Kaylee. Kaylee Hinsman. I believe he, you can't see my presentation, I'm assuming. Sorry. Can you see my presentation? No, we cannot. Well, thank you so much. My name is Kaylee Hensman. I am from Sports Facilities Companies. We are based out of Clearwater, Florida. As Mayor Ken stated, uh, the city has engaged us to do a market and feasibility study. He asked us to attend the meeting tonight just to give a brief overdue overview um, of who we are, what we do, and our scope of work. Uh, so that's what we will cover today in our agenda. A little bit about our company. Our mission is to improve the health and economic vitality of the communities we serve. We have three arms in our company. We have our advisory, our development, and management. This portion of the scope of work, we are in that advisory, that planning, and feasibility. Our company was founded in 2003. We're over in 2,500 communities, and um, we currently manage over 50 uh, facilities across the nation. So in this map, the closest ones to you all would be number eight and 13 in the yellow yellowish orange, that would be in Brandon, Mississippi, and Starkville. Uh, both of those facilities are facilities that our companies manage. Um, in Brandon, Mississippi, it is um, the Parks and Rec um, department that we manage, and we run two of their locations that have sports tournament um, assets from Diamonds and Longfields. And then in um, Starkville, it is a diamond complex, so your baseball, your softball, those events. Next up, this is just a visual on our concept to concrete. This is what we kind of give a Candyland timeline of the start of a project to the end of a project. 
So on that far left-hand side, you'll see the concept of that market uh, feasibility. That's the step we're currently in. We're here to find out what the community is about, what the needs, what the desires are, and what would best support this community. Um, from there, we have the performa. That performa document will provide revenue, expenses, bottom lines, and next steps on how to move forward with this project. It's really important to note that we're not here today to make any recommendations. We're here to learn from you and your community. We're here to tour the sites, the parks, parks and rec, and meet with uh, community members like yourself to learn more about the community. This is our scope of work and what we're currently engaged to do. Uh, thus far in the process, we've had a kickoff call with the mayor and his team. Uh, we have reviewed some of the existing data that has been sent over, and currently we're in step three, which is our development planning session. So throughout the next two days, we'll be in market, meeting with the team and diving deep into the project to learn more. Coming out of our development session, um, we will do steps four and five, which is our detailed financial forecast and our economic impact. That's where we talk about how much money could come into the community by sports tourism events, how much revenue you could bring in with leagues, camps, clinics, summer camp programs. And then coming out of that is the feasibility report. Uh, timeline, after this, it's about eight to 10 weeks for steps four and five will de deliver that draft performa. And then a roughly two to three weeks for that feasibility report. So start to finish, we're roughly about 12 uh, weeks um, from this week. As we build out our recommendations, we use, like, we use what we like to call our funnel. This process is where we start with definitions of success. So we'll discuss with the team tomorrow, what's the goals of this project? What are you hoping to accomplish while we're here? What do we need to learn? What do we need to know? That could be anything. We want to increase sports tourism. We want to increase economic impact for our community. We want to be financially sustainable for this new complex if there is one. Um, we want to grow our local sports programs. We want to create new sports. You could say all of the above, uh, but we are here to gather that information and find that out, and that's what we will use as our definitions of success. From there, we'll take the data from demographics, research, competition. As the mayor stated, we go out a four-hour uh, four radius drive time. So we'll take from the city of Olive Branch and we'll do a drive time map and it will go four hours to find the competition that's in the area, pricing research that's in the area, to see where you compare and everything like that. And those will inform our recommendations. And then from there, we'll take our experience, our industry of over 50 facilities throughout the nation, and those will help inform our recommendations and results for uh, the city of Olive Branch. This last couple slides, it's just a couple examples of facilities that are in our market. Uh, by no means is this anything that we were recommending at the time. We just wanted to provide a couple examples of what it might look like. Uh, so this facility is the Rocky Mount Event Center. This is an indoor facility only. Um, it's a big facility. It's an eight court, 16 volleyball court facility. So what we, what we mean by that is there are eight courts and then you could overlay two volleyball courts per court. Um, in addition to that, our, flexes, our spaces are always flexible, so we want to have spaces that have event capability. You could do cheerleading, gymnastics, wrestling, conventions. This facility also has the capability to bring all those uh, seats in to do concerts. And then you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, it also has banquet capability. And that is in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. This facility is West Monroe. So this is in West Monroe, Louisiana similar to our Rocky Mount facility, but on a smaller scale. So it has the eight and 16 volleyball courts, but it doesn't have the extra space to do those, the large events, conventions, banquets, weddings. And then the last one is our Hoover Met Complex. So this is a mixture of an indoor and outdoor facility. This is based in Hoover, Alabama, roughly 30 minutes from Birmingham. Um, this is a, a large, large facility where it's got the 11 basketball courts with the 17 volleyball courts overlaying it. It's got long fields, long fields we consider soccer fields, football fields, lacrosse fields, and then it has the baseball diamonds. A unique aspect about this facility is that it also has a stadium for baseballs and tournaments and events. Um, in addition, it also has an RV park for members to come and park their RVs at the facility whether or not they're attending the facility or not. So coming out of today, our goal this week is just to get to know Olive Branch, get to know the members of the community, and find out what this community is about, the wants and its needs. 
coming out of that, our team back in the Clearwater office will debrief and uh, start to make those recommendations and weekly we'll inform the mayor and his team on what we're finding, the process, where we're at in the steps, and then deliver this draft performa in eight weeks. Our goal is to serve you all and provide a document that doesn't sit on the shelf. We want it to be a tool and a guideline for you all to move this community forward in their sports and recreation programs. So we're here to support you and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Hickman. Board, any questions uh, regarding SFC, Sports Facilities Companies? Ms. Hickman, I know some of us will be meeting with you later this week. Just real quick, you mentioned uh, advisory capacity, development, and management. Yes, sir. And I'm assuming advisory would be the capacity of kind of where we are now, finding out what we want, how to help us get there. Obviously, development could be construction, ground lease, et cetera, and then management is running the facility, so to speak, or all three. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so the advisory, I just pulled that slide back up so it can sit on your screen a little longer. Uh, so we are in that first blue box over there, the planning phase. Um, the next step that our advisory team does is helps in planning. So if you needed to find partners in the community to help fund this project forward, we have that capability as well. Uh, the second phase is development. We don't build facilities, but we partner and we're owner's reps for those facilities. And then that last, um, the last two blocks are our opening and management. It's important to know that we also have marketing HR, resources, along with our management that help support all of our venues that are nationwide. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Being a grandmother of two, what's the most exciting thing about your becoming a mom? We're excited to be here. How they give them the support they require. Awesome. Any additional questions? Busy travel day getting here? Busy. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for presenting and look forward to working with you over the next couple of days. Absolutely. Thank you. And you all have my business card. If you've got any questions, comments, all my contact info is on there. Feel free to please reach out. And we're looking forward to getting into the details of the next two days. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you Before we get to the mayor's update, uh, do we have another public comment item? I believe one today from, is Mr. Anthony Del George with us? Come forward. Good evening. Good evening. I think you'd like to speak with us about your neighborhood, your yard, is that correct? Yes, yes sir. So my name is Anthony Del George, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm not very good at public speaking, so I was a little bit nervous, so forgive me for my inexperience. I'm here with my fiance, Nicole. Um, I just wanna say thank you for allotting me some of this time to speak with you today. Um, I wanna say thank you to uh, Tina Stewart and Pamela Stout for um, setting this up so that I could speak. We're very privileged to be able to speak in front of you because I know there's a lot of important matters. Um, that's why we were excited. We're new residents of Olive Branch. We're so happy to be a part of this community. Uh, Nicole and I have been here for approximately 14 to 15 months. We moved into the Pleasant Ridge community off of Pleasant Hill. Um, we were excited for the expansions that have been going on in Olive Branch. You know, we see all these new things going on. We're very excited. It increases property value. We're seeing new homes being built. Um, so, so we're very grateful to be a part of this community. What we have noticed, though, to bring up the issue of what we have noticed, um, we have noticed that in our backyard over the north side of our fence, there is a development being made and it's with homes and we have noticed over a 12 to 14 month period, uh, continuous degradation of our yard and erosion um, and sediment and contaminated water coming through our property. Now we have contacted the previous owners and said, you know, has this been happening to you before? And they said that not to that extent, uh, both with the water quantity and the contaminated water coming through our yard. The result is, in summary, that we've had um, multiple 
divots in our yard, dead grass that I can't give you an exact percentage, but it's been, it's been getting worse and worse over time. Now we've sought um, assistance from the engineering departments uh, over time and we were very happy that they came out very quickly. You know, we were happy the engineering department was, was on top of it and coming out and seeing our issue. And every time a solution was come, you know, came to fruition, it seemed like a month later our yard would be back and if not worse um, with contaminated water in our yard. We still have to this day on a uh, clear sunny day, approximately two weeks ago, clear sunny day, we had flooding in our yard with contaminated water. So we were very concerned about that. So we brought that issue. I also wanna say a thank you to, because um, some representatives came today to our home, uh, Andy Swims and Mr. Todd Andra, they came and there was another representative from I believe the Public Works Department, I apologize uh, for not remembering his name, but they came and although we remain hopeful that a solution could be identified and initiated some actions and fixing it, we're still, you know, we're, we have no other options. So we just wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, you know, we're, we've been trying to establish a, a sense of home. You know, Nicole is a NICU nurse. I'm a firefighter paramedic. So again, I'm not used to this public speaking though. When we come home, we like to de-stress, but we just, over time, it's progressively gotten worse and worse and worse. So we just wanted to bring it to your attention. We're very, very grateful again and for the representatives from the planning department, public works department, engineering department, we're so grateful that, that they came to our home and uh, are addressing the issue. But as of yet, we have not seen a solution uh, to this issue. So I know that there's more important things going on, but we, I thank you so much now, for your now, time. Now th this is important as well. I did want to confirm the photographs that you gave to the yes, board. I did, yes, they were sir. in June of 2023 of water, yes. sheet water flowing across your backyard. Uh, now that, your developers added a retention pond since then? Uh, again, I, I'm not sure exactly what has been done. Okay. Um, we I'm know that a silt it, fence. I'm curious if it helped after the developer added the retention pond for some of the water runoff in the subdivision. To, to, bring, a, to bring that to attention, we contracted an engineer privately and he addressed some of those issues. Okay. Um, I could refer to that document more so than I, I don't know personally um, exactly, so I don't want to speak to that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Swims, the uh, engineer report concluded with, I recommend you implore the developer to install a stormwater detention facility, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Did that take place after this letter of April the 28th, 2023 took place? It did. Um, I agree with the, the items that were put in there with the letter um, that uh, we did come back. The, uh, the developer installed the, uh, a dry detention basin this is just for the board's um, understanding. It's a small cul-de-sac that's being developed as a part of the Pleasant Ridge um, Estates. I think it's phase, I'm not sure what phase it is, but it's probably 15 to 20 homes. They're under active construction right now. Okay. So it's probably at its worst. Um, but we did, um, there has been since that letter was written, a detention basin has been put in. We, we've asked them to make a few other concessions that they've done, their, their stormwater measures are in, are in place. I think um, we've got some, some ideas we think that, that could help this situation to get it resolved. So we're, we're working with Mr. Bill George to try to um, see if we can't, and the developer to see if we can't Perfect. come up with some solutions that might help um, come to a, a satisfying conclusion. Okay, per Does it perfect. Cause all the muddy water? I'm sorry? Does this cause all the muddy water to develop? Yes. There's, so right now they're building just about all those homes at once. And so most, well, a portion of that, um, that development drains toward his backyard um, and that goes into a detention area um, that's uh, on the outlet side of the structure. We've had them build a, a riffraff ring and then they've got silt fence. All that seemed to be in place today when we were there. Um, they've got silt fence um, check downs along the, uh, the ditch entering to the detention basin. So. Um, they've done, they've been pretty responsive to everything we've asked them to do. Um, but when you have that much construction going over the entire site, uh, to make the water leaving the site clear is not, is not an easy thing to do. Um, but um, I, I think we've, we've got some ways that we can probably improve um, and we're gonna, we're gonna look and see if we can't get some resolution of that. Okay, thank you. Board? What, what subcommittee did you behind you? I apologize, sir. We, we live in Pleasant Ridge community okay. right off Pleasant Hill and State Line. I don't know the exact 
okay. um, beyond the north side of our fence line. We just added like a two-inch range. Did you, was it still coming? That like yes, sir. That? We have pictures. I believe I sent to um, Ms. Stewart or Ms. Stout recently Not of a week ago, approximately, of, of that was just about a, a couple inches of rain. Um, and the, the issue, too, is that the rain remains standing for days um, beyond what a normal standing water. And I believe that that's due to the sediment that's contaminated our yard. Um, we have not much, you know, Bermuda grass anymore. It's more so, it's just, it, you know, weeds and mud that we've been dealing with. Probably is for engineering and uh, public works to keep working with the developer and uh, and this is a good report from your engineer. We'll work with them also, but it sounds like Mr. Swims has a couple ideas. Uh, Mr. Andre, anything to add? I know you were out there today as well. Yeah, Mr. Dale George. Yes, sir. The pneumatics in my chair keeps sliding down. I know <laughs> I'm short, but I'm not disappearing on purpose. I'm um, short too. <laughs> we, we have restructured our wards, and I am now, you're in my ward in Ward 1, so I'll also yes, sir. come take a look and then follow up with our team, because I know at some point we'll get some resolution, but we appreciate your patience and your kindness, and we will not let it go unnoticed. We'll keep working as hard as we can to rectify it for you. Yes, sir. We know we know y'all are busy. We, we yeah. understand. We get it. And like, like I said, we're very happy to be a part of this community. We you know that the future of this community backyard. is very good. <laughs> Well, so thank that's you. We we're, gl we're glad you're here. Yeah, we we'll take all it. the paramedics we can get. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that what you said your vocation is? You, I'm sorry. You paramedic, is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, I'm a firefighter paramedic. Yeah, we'll, we'll sure take all those we can get. But uh, <laughs> thank you very much. And we'll continue working with staff and see this to a conclusion. Thank you, sir. You bet. Good day. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Following our agenda for mayor's update, Ms. Cook, Ms. Angela Cook. Forward, we wanted to uh, thank Ms. Cook for serving uh, on our planning design review and have a certificate of recognition we'd like to present to her. It reads, whereas Angela Cook served on the City of Olive Branch Planning Design Review Advisory Committee for a four-year term beginning July the 10th, 2017, and whereas Angela Cook was reappointed to the City of Olive Branch Board of Adjustment, where she had served since July the 8th, 2021, and whereas Angela Cook was elected to the Board of Adjustment Vice Chair on January the 12th, 2023, and whereas over her six and a half years, Angela Cook has had an excellent attendance and came well prepared to discuss and review applications with fellow committee and board members, and whereas Angela Cook has taken a positive, collaborative, and collegial approach in her service, which has led to sound decision-making on both the Design Review Advisory Committee and the Board of Adjustment, and is deemed to have benefited the city residents and businesses be it therefore resolved by the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Olive Branch, as follows to wit the contribution of Angela Cook is formally acknowledged and the City's deep sense of appreciation for loyal and faithful service rendered to the City of Olive Branch, signed and dated this day, City of Olive Branch. Thank you very much. Just a couple more updates, board uh, notified yesterday, a little bit too late for the agenda, but we were notified that we received, we will receive $750,000 from U.S. Congress for rehabilitation and upgrade of our air traffic control tower at the Olive Branch Airport to include communications equipment, roof, windows, shades, airfield lighting, et cetera, uh, from U.S. Congress. Also notified as well that we're receiving a $3.5 million grant a zero matching grant for airport tarmac improvement by Congress as well. And as you know, we went to Washington and asked for a couple more things, Highway 305, 78 and Craft Road interchange. Uh, we haven't got an answer on those yet, but we hope to get those answers in the next month. So 
if we can hit a home run with these and maybe secure some other grants for those items, or at least a portion of them, that would be uh, pretty awesome for sure. So I'll keep you updated as we go along. Our new fire admin building, the ribbon cutting, is set for this Friday, uh, March the 22nd at noontime at the new location on Old Goodman Road. Hopefully you can join us. Uh, you heard the feedback from SFC, Sports Facilities Companies, uh, and tomorrow at 3 p.m., I believe several of you, a couple of you are going to be available to give them input on what you'd like to see uh, at the end of the day in our Parks and Recs program. And keep in mind, not only are they looking at future programs, they're looking at our existing facilities and fields now to decide what can be done with our current facilities to make them and better, better and improve them as well. And we're going to make sure we do not leave out our community parks like Ivy Trails, Magnolia Trails, Magnolia Park, and, and those community parks as well. And last but not least, the Mayor's Youth Council. This was our inaugural year, uh, very successful. Uh, thanks to Jen Griffith and, and Jay Nichols, uh, they hit a home run with this one and did a great job. Uh, they had a program last weekend, a weekend before last in Starkville, and uh, took second place in an award and just a great group of youth uh, that were representing the city of Olive Branch. I think we had 24, 25 total, and uh, most of them made the trip. and just did a really good job representing the city. So hats off to Jen Griffith for putting the program together and Jay Nichols for assisting uh, in that particular program and it was uh, a success. And on Tuesday, April the 2nd, 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. at the Wesson House, we'll send your board a calendar invite as far as their graduation program uh, to graduate through the Mayor's Youth Council. Again, the first one the city's had, so it's been very positive. Mayor, that tarmac program was that a five million dollar project and we got three and a half million of it from yes this grant exactly we asked for five and got 3.5 okay and we'll carry it as, as far as it'll go down the tarmac the 3.5 million dollars worth of asphalt thank you any other questions about the grants okay board you have the consent agenda before you any questions on those items on the consent agenda No questions, any any motions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Mr. Collins motion, Mr. Wallace second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries to approve consent agenda as is. Planning Commission, old business consideration of an application for a zoning map amendment submitted by Tim Discos the Gastineau, excuse me, WH Porter Consultants on behalf of property owner Charles Allen. The request is to rezone the property from AR, Agricultural Residential, to R3, Planned Residential District, and to adopt the project text and development plan for Kirk Farms, a 691 lot, low density, single family residential development on 234.01 plus or minus acres, located on the northeast corner of the intersection of Highway 302 and Eastern Drive. This public hearing date was set originally for January the 16th uh, during the meeting of the 19th. I believe that was our snow day and we tabled that so that uh, we, we, we didn't want to be the only ones here. We wanted the public comments so we tabled it uh, to another date and then pushed it to the day uh, for some changes that the board had asked the applicant to make uh, and it's been tabled until this public hearing date uh, of today. Staff report. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, the staff report will essentially focus on three main things. The first being a general presentation on the application, especially for the benefit of those who were not here at the last meeting. They also take it into consideration the fact that uh, on February 20th, when you had this application, the public hearing was actually closed, as indicated there on the slide at 7.21 p.m. Uh, you did direct staff to work with the applicant on a number of changes, and I will focus on highlighting those changes followed by a recommendation. Just to highlight, the property is located north of Goodman Road, east of East. It's currently a vacant lot. It is zoned ARO Agricultural Residential District, which requires that lots should be minimum one acre in size. 
the request before you is a, is that this property should be rezoned from AR Agricultural Residential District to PUD Plan Unit Development for the purpose of developing the Kirk Farm Single Family Residential Planned Development uh, District. This is the general layout of the site uh, to the west. You have this rural estate subdivision. To the east, you have a Fox Creek subdivision. There will be one entrance off of Goodman Road lined up with that cut across the street. This will be the main spine road across the subdivision, basically Forest Hill Irene. Uh, there will be another entrance off of Pork Lane coming into the property that will be constructed in a later phase of the subdivision. You also have a connection onto Fox Creek, which will be constructed in the first phase of the development itself. At the planning commission meeting, and as staff did indicate at the last meeting, the neighbors in this rural estate subdivision were opposed to any connection of these streets to the new development. As such, you have those hammerheads <coughs> that are proposed to the top, and then you have the turnaround or Eastern Drive at the northeast, and then you have the other road to the south that would come in. There's a road to the south that would come in from Eastern Drive straight into this uh, subdivision. Are you able to see my, get my mic? There you go, okay, thank you. So this is the, the road to the south, which has been offset from um, this other street, Thompson Drive, within this subdivision to make sure that we don't have cut throughs into the adjoining rural estate development. As I did mention, this will be developed in 16 phases, beginning from Goodman Road, extending northward, so this can be said to be like the first cluster. You begin from Goodman Road, phase one, two, right up to phase 11, phase nine, will extend the side onto Pork Lane. The second cluster is in the north of Fox Creek. That will begin phase 12, and then will be developed westward and completed in phase 16 of the project. <coughs> With respect to the changes that have been made since you considered this item at your meeting last month, and as the applicant to work with staff, first, the total number of lots that were initially proposed, there were 691. That has been reduced to 603. So the applicant has, or the developer, has lost over, or has you know, eliminated over 88 lots in this, in this development. The second is, because of that reduction in the number of lots, the proposed density overall density of the development has reduced from 2.95 dwelling units per acre to 2.58 dwelling units per acre. That is lower than even the R01 zoning district in the city. The R01 zoning district is in the three dwelling units per acre range. So that is a very low density development. The total number of 6,000 square foot lots, which was a concern that the board raised at your last meeting, there were 569 that were proposed. Those have been reduced to 173, just over 28% of the entire development. So initially, those small lots, the smaller size lots, 6,000 square feet, initially they comprise 82% of the development. That has been reduced to 28, just over 28%. And the total land area of the development occupied by the 6,000 square foot lot, that was 51.4%, that, that has been reduced to just 15.25% to address the concern which the board had that um, just an overwhelming uh, number of lots were going to be small size 6,000 square foot lots. So that has been significantly reduced. The total number of the minimum 7,000 square foot lots have been increased. The, lot, the, the board had preferred to see the lot sizes, you know, more bigger lots. As such, the developer increased 
the number of seven, minimum 7,200, not 7,000, please, 7,200. So the developer increased the minimum 7,200 square feet lots from 74 to 323. That increased the area covered by those lots from 21 to 85 acres. The total number of the minimum 10,000 square feet lots has also been increased from 48 to 107. Uh, in that also increased the total area of the site occupied by those lots from 22.35 acres to over 41 acres. So that's over double the land area of the larger lots, which was the direction the board wanted this development to go. The board had also indicated that you would prefer to see the, the lots along Goodman Road increased in size. So initially, you only had two manor lots, that's a minimum 10,000 square feet lots along Goodman Road. You had two 7,000, minimum 7,200 square feet lots, and then the rest were the 6,000 square feet lots. Along Pork Lane, you had a similar scenario with just the manor lots to the south, and then the neighborhood lots, minimum 7,200 to the north. All of that has been changed. So now across or along Old Goodman, the lot sizes have all been increased from 6,000 square feet and 7,200 square feet to minimum 10,000 square feet lots. And then along Pork Lane, right up to the common open space area, all the cottage, the neighborhood lots that you had there have all been eliminated. All you have there now are the largest lots, uh, the manor lots minimum. 10,000 square feet. Jason, can you go back, please? Mayor, is this kind of like court? Do you have a 15 minute recess or? Okay. <laughs>
Please continue. With these changes in the total number of lots, different types of lots that are proposed, those changes also affect the, the number of houses of different sizes that you're going to have in this particular subdivision. So if you look at the typical 2,400 square feet house size for cottage lots, which are lots that are minimum 6,000 square feet, that was initially going to constitute 82% of this development. Uh, the revision, per revision, revision that has been decreased to 28%. And then the neighborhood lots, house size, effective house size of over 2,550 square feet, that was going to uh, constitute 10.71% of the development. It has now been increased to 28%. And then your largest house size, that is minimum 2,800 square feet, that includes both heated and the unheated areas of the house. Total footprint. Total footprint, okay. yes sir. So the minimum 2,800 square feet, that has been increased from 9.65% of the development to a minimum 17.70% of this, this uh, uh, Kirk Farm PD. Another issue that the board raised at the last meeting had to do with the cemetery on the property, how many cemeteries were there what plan the developer had as far as those cemeteries are concerned. A, an environmental phase two study was conducted by the developer and it was determined from that study that there is a marked cemetery. There is a marked cemetery at this location. Is that, is my cursor showing? Are you able to see my laser pointer? Thank you. So there's a cemetery at this location, and then there is an unmarked cemetery just to the west where you have that pocket park. The marked cemetery has, there is this wall, see the pictures at the bottom of the screen. There is a wall around it that is dilapidated. You have trees that have fallen, have fallen on it. And the developer has included in the project text measures that will be taken. The first, that this wall will be repaired. And if it is not possible to rebuild it, then the developer is going to replace it with the uh, fence as you have at the lower right of, the, of, of your screen. Mm -hmm. So that will be a fence, gated fence that will be provided if this wall cannot be fully repaired and repainted and this cemetery preserved. The unmarked cemetery is also in this area where you've got these trees. You know, you have these large oak trees. All those trees will be preserved in that particular area. It will also be fenced off. That is this pocket park uh, in this particular area. It will, yeah, right there. That's, that's, that's the pocket park, that's where you have the second unmarked uh, cemetery. That is going to be preserved, will also be fenced off. The covenants and restrictions will in include language granting to the families commemorative access to these particular cemeteries. So although these will be put in common open space owned and maintained by the homeowners association, the families will have rights of access to these cemeteries. In the course of doing these changes, there was in the northeast cluster that you have, there was no common open space right there at the center. So this design, if I just go back, uh, you will notice from this design, the redesign, that the smaller lots have been concentrated in the center. So initially you had those lots just kind of spread across the entire property, the 6,000 square foot lot. That has been changed. Those lots are now concentrated at the center of the development in both clusters, surrounded by the larger lots. So the design is such that you, the, the larger lots are at the periphery and the smaller lots are at the center. With this design, the applicant has added 
this common open space will be creational area at the center of the northeast cluster, just north of Fox Creek uh, subdivision. One other feature that is worth noting, which is indicated here with these notes, is about seven amenities are proposed, recreation amenities are proposed in this development. Two are, three are absolutely certain. Well, let me say two. First, you have the pickleball court and the swimming pool, the swimming pool to the south. The developer intends to, by the time they get to phase 11 and phase 12 of this development, you would already have very many property owners in this subdivision. I think it's a wise decision on this part to consult those property owners on what other amenities they would want to have so that he can provide them in the other open spaces that are proposed. Those will be specified when the preliminary plat for those particular phases come before the board for approval. These are the amenities that are maintained. So you have the walking trail over 4,000 feet. You have the, as a walking trail, you have the swimming pool, which will be constructed in phase one of the development. You have the pickable court that will be in phase three. Uh, you have the dog park that will be around phase eight of the development. And as far as the other phases, the other two for, uh, parks are concerned, <coughs> those ones will come before you for during the preliminary, preliminary plat approval. A couple of things that I think is worth mentioning has to do with other maintenance responsibility that this particular homeowners association will be taking over. You have these recreational facilities. They will be turned over to the homeowners association to maintain, there are seven of them. You have the retention and detention pond, marked shown there in blue. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. This will be the responsibility of the homeowners association. You have the roundabout and medians, their entire uh, Fox Creek, Forest Hill Irene is designed as a boulevard with median in the middle of the road. A common practice in the city has been to put these medians as a responsibility for the homeowners association to maintain. You have the roundabout. There are three of them that are proposed. The very first roundabout from Goodman Road will have a water fountain future uh, for the neighborhood. All of these will be the responsibility of the homeowners association to maintain. You also have the greenway at the north and in between the development. The greenway areas to the north, the developer proposes to plant more trees in those particular areas. This will also become the responsibility of the homeowners association. You have the streetscape in the front of the property. So you have the main monument, the monument at the bottom design shown there at the bottom, that will be the entrance uh, from both Goodman Road and Fork Lane. And then you will have this design, uh, the picture you have right here at the north of your screen, northwest of your screen. That is current construction by D.R. Horton on Villages and South Branch. That's currently under construction. That's basically exactly what they are proposing or to some extent uh, in this particular development. So you will have a line of trees. You have the first line of trees as shown there. You have those three trees with the landscaping. You have the Crossberg fence. You have a roll of staggered evergreen trees. And then the very first lot on the side will have um, a no see-through fence. These, all these streetscapes will and entrance features will also become the maintenance responsibility of the homeowners association. What this means in financial terms is if the developer keeps reducing the number of lots, then the homeowners association will have to charge each property owner there more money in order to provide sufficient finances to maintain all of this infrastructure. It is wise and if the homeowners association cannot maintain all of this because they don't have the money, then they, this will just become an eyesore to the community. They will not be maintained. They will become you know, dilapidated and become a significant problem to the community. So it is best to 
at least with the number of lots that have been proposed, per the calculations that the developer has made, uh, this will, be, will provide sufficient amount of funds to maintain all these amenities. The rezoning criteria staff this mentioned this last time. I'll quickly run through this. The, as I did mention, the property is currently zone A arrow district. Most other developments adjoining this property have over the years been changed from agricultural residential to suburban neighborhood, Fox Creek, Braeburn, Laurel Brook, Senna Hill Plantation. All of those have been changed from agricultural residential to suburban single family residential development which aligns with both the lot sizes and the character of the development that the applicant is proposing. The future land use map also designates the site as suburban neighborhood, which satisfies the public need requirement. The applicant has incorporated all the <coughs> conditions that the planning commission recommended approval subject to. All these conditions have been incorporated into the project text. That is why you have them all on this strike through. They have all been removed because they have been included in the project text. After the planning commission meeting, there were these two conditions that staff uh, added. The first one requiring that the applicant will sh contribute, work with the city engineer and the city attorney in coming out with a shared funding agreement with respect to the provision of sewer to this for this particular development and any changes that the Board of Adaman may require will have to be made and included in the project text that will be provided by the applicant for the city's records. Subsequently, consequently, the recommendation before you is to consider that the character of the neighborhood has changed from agricultural and rural estate to a predominantly single family suburban residential development and that the future land use map in the city's comprehensive plan 2040, which articulates the city's land use public needs, designates the property as suburban residential, which the proposed development aligns with. Secondly, the planning commission at its December 12, 2023 meeting, unanimously recommended approval of this particular subdivision or PD, and all the conditions of approval have been incorporated into the project text. Third, the changes that the board wanted the applicant to make, those changes have been made and incorporated into the project text, which now significantly meets the criteria for per development in the city and enhance the overall quality of the proposed development. Therefore, staff recommends that the board approve first, take two actions. First, approve the rezoning of the subject property <coughs> from ARO Agricultural Residential to PUD, Plant Unit Development, and two, approve the associated project text and preliminary development plan for Kirk Farm subject to these three conditions. The first being that all development responsibilities shall be those of the applicant or the developer, not of the city of Olive Branch. The second, that the developer would work with the city engineer and the city attorney in coming out with the agreement for provision of sewer for this particular uh, development based on the principle of raw proportionality. And lastly, any changes that the board may require should be made by the applicant submitted to staff for the records before a preliminary plat for phase one is submitted for planning commission's consideration. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Mr. Song, just for clarification, I think the application and the staff report indicate that the rezoning would be from AR to R3, not PUD, which for purposes of the project text itself may be a distinction without a difference. For, for purposes of the ordinance and the zoning map, it would be a difference between PUD and R3. That's, that's accurate. Okay. That's accurate. Thank you, Mr. Song. And so the developer listened to the board's uh, input at the last meeting reduced by 88 lots. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, sir. Okay. Board, do you have any questions regarding the staff report? Mayor, I'd like to make a comment. I um, believe that our uh, planning staff did an excellent job working with the developers to bring up a much, much um, more desirable plan. I appreciate that mm -hmm. from all of y'all. 
Thank you, staff. Any questions on the report? I, I'll echo that same thought. It, it's a much better presentation, and I'll bring up the same point I brought up last time. There, every week on social media, somebody's asking for a grocery store on the east side of town. You're never going to get a grocery store on the east side of town if you don't have any houses and rooftops over there. This is an excellent development to get that started over on that side of town. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. A song. I did have a question, please, for uh, clarification. I have no problem at all with what's presented. I did have a question of building materials. Should that be addressed during the preliminary phase, i.e., 16-inch um, centers, material of brick, et cetera, or should we do that now? I think the applicant committed verbally for the minutes. It's, it's included in the that's minutes. What I, that's what I thought. Um, the, the application before you, the project, the rezoning and the project text, these essentially address zoning and subdivision issues. Correct. The building material is a building code issue. It will be wise to leave it out of the project text itself because it's not a zoning issue. Okay. But it has been included in the minutes of the board. From our the prior meeting. did consent to that. From the prior meeting, correct? From the prior yes. meeting, yes, sir. Okay. I think just to add on to what a song mentioned right there, I think as to the percentage of brick composition, that is a matter that the board at, from time to time has addressed in the project text. As it concerns uh, building methods and, and building uh, requirements, those are matters that are covered by the international codes that the city has adopted. And I don't recommend that the board adopt differing building codes on a subdivision by subdivision basis like uh, the, the stud centers and so forth, mm -hmm. decking material, all that is governed by the international codes that are administered uniformly by our building department. And so I would not recommend that that type of uh, matter be included in the project text, but it's within the board's discretion and prerogative to address like a brick composition. Should there be X percentage of brick on an exterior? That's certainly within the board's preview and approval of a project text. Okay. And the board had asked that all the facade should be minimum 75% brick. Yes. That has been included in the project. Okay, text. and I'm, I'm satisfied with that and I appreciate that, that concession. I just want to clarify that that was on the minutes from last time or if it need to be addressed here, so. All right, thank you. If, if it's in the text, the, nothing was approved at the last meeting. Right. So the minutes of the last meeting don't reflect any approval. Right. If it was if reflected in the project text that's before the board tonight, then if that project text were approved, then it would be approved by the board. Right. Thank you, Mr. Dye, Mr. Earhart. Does the applicant have anything else to add to the presentation? How y'all doing? Henry Porter, W.H. Porter, 6055, Promise Heath Parkway, Memphis, Tennessee, 38119. Uh, look, we really appreciate working with y'all. We've uh, tried to incorporate as many recommendations from staff, from y'all as we can, and frankly, really think that we're, it's always been kind of our intent to create something that's uh, an asset to y'all, and we really feel like that's what we've done here. But if y'all have any questions for us, we'd be more than willing to answer them. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant, for Mr. Porter, from the board? Mayor, if there's no board question, I had just one. I was looking at the boundary survey in the document. Is there any remaining issue on that uh, western end where it would adjoin the Pope Lane right away? We are, I know we've been researching on that one, trying okay. to figure it out, and we've worked, uh, reached out to staff. Okay. Um, so I think it's been cleared up by now that it was uh, bought with the right of way. I believe I'm that's sorry. what it was. I believe it was cleared up now that it was bought with the widening of, of Polk. Okay. You think that there's not a remaining gap between the eastern edge of the Polk Lane right away I, and I the western so. edge of the subject yeah. property? Okay. Thank you, Mr. That's Porter. Fine. Any questions from the board for Mr. Porter? Just a reminder, please use our microphones if you have one. Make sure it's on green when you're speaking. Any questions from the applicant or for the applicant? I don't have a question, but all the concerns I had, y'all would addressed and I appreciate that uh, through the planning department and stuff so I, it looks like a good plan to me now I, I appreciate y'all making the changes 
Thank you, Mr. Collins, Mr. Porter. At the last hearing, we had actually closed public comments, but I want to make sure that we've heard people that need to be heard and want to be heard. So if you are a proponent, if you're for this development and you'd like to come forward as a resident or a citizen, you're for this development, please come forward. And when you come forward, I ask you to do a couple things. State your name and address uh, into the microphone and the little blue cards on the table behind the, po the lectern, if you will complete that and give it to the clerk. Uh, to your left when you leave. All right, yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Tim Layett, and I was here last time, living 7339 Polk Lane, and I wanna thank all of y'all for working with these guys to get a, a good subdivision going in. We've been worried about, you know, something that was gonna be a nightmare, and between you guys working with them, it looks like it's gonna be okay. <clears throat> and our lot, well, we got three acres, when you go into the, the new subdivision off of Polk Lane, I'll have like five houses. Their backyards will put up to our property. So we have to worry about like five or six families coming in to our yard. <clears throat> and I'm glad to see y'all kept the bigger houses there because that way you got more of a chance of somebody taking care of their stuff. <clears throat> and, uh, but again, I just wanna say thanks that y'all did y'all's part to give us a, a decent area. Well, thank so, you. That, that should serve as a good thanks. buffer of what you're speaking of. So a right, good you. buffer between their, their property and yours. Thank you. Anyone else for this development? You want to speak on behalf of it? Hearing none or seeing none, anyone opposed to this development? Come forward, please. Good evening. Hi there. I am Laura Grisham, 7380 Pleasant Drive. And I've been here through all the different meetings and with the meetings that we've had with the developer. And I wanna thank the board for extending all the different questions and concerns for our neighborhood because we've been there for a very long time. I wanna thank the people who are developing the neighborhood that they have really come to the table and made sure that we were all heard in all the different things that we were concerned with. So thank you all. Awesome, thank you. We enjoy success stories, absolutely. Anyone would like to speak in opposition, you're not in favor of this development, not in favor of this application? Hearing none or seeing none, I'll, I'll close public comments at this time. Does the board have any questions at all for the staff or the applicant? Mayor, I, I will uh, tender a motion to approve recommending from AR to the PUD uh, subject to the uh, guideline provided by our um, planning department with one addition, if I might, that it be recorded in the project text to have the exterior materials of brick or stone to be a minimum of 75%. Motion before the board for- and Just for clarification, the rezoning would be from AR to R3. Okay. Is that right, Mr. Earhart? I, Motion I from I AR. Backwards on that, so I apologize. Right. Yes. So from AR right. to R3, okay. and with one additional item, uh, one additional requirement that 75% would be brick or brick or stone, stone. Hard, hard surface material. I think we're there, brick but I want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion on the table? Second. Second by Mr. Collins. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Approved as presented with the exception of the change. Thank you for everyone who showed uh, up tonight and the other night to give us input. Following the agenda, this is a public hearing date for consideration of an application to repeal the project text and preliminary development plan for Kruger Service Center and replace it with Delta Regional Foundation Center submitted by Bob Farley and Delta Regional Foundation on behalf of Nancy Job Stampley, property owner. The request is to establish a charitable bingo, charitable bingo facility on 5.77 plus or minus acres located on the east side of Highway 178, approximately one quarter mile north of Newcraft Road, the address of 7268 Highway 178 within the C4 planned commercial zoning district. A public hearing date was set for this particular date on February the 20th. Staff report, please. Yes, sir, as you can see on your first slide, the subject property is just under six acres in size, and we're located at the, on the northeast side of Highway 178, 
and we're between Old Craft Road uh, and New Craft Road intersections. And the intent of this application is to establish a new site for the jackpot bingo facility that's currently located at 7852 Craft uh, Road, which is at the Craft Road I-78 interchange area. And they would be vacating that site and building a new facility on the subject property. And that's what this project text does is essentially uh, keeps the zoning SC4, but trades out one project text for another one. And this just shows you a close up of the subject 5.77 acres, Highway 178 is on one side and it backs up to the railroad tracks on the other and there's some sparse development located around the uh, property on both the north and south sides. What you could see on the left hand side of your screen is the existing um, preliminary development plan and it's a project text for a development called Kruger Service Center and the Board of Aldermen approved that on January 4th of 2022. And as you can see on the preliminary development plan, it had seven buildings arranged in a linear pattern that were intended between four and 5,000 square feet and they were intended to be used for light industrial purposes. And the proposed project text and preliminary development plan, the plan is shown on the right hand side, is for the Delta Regional Foundation and they add to the uses that were permissible under the Kruger project text, a use called civic, fraternal, charitable gaming, bingo parlor and other charitable activities. The buildings are consolidated into one 14,000 square foot building and again, the intent would be to relocate the bingo facility to this uh, location in the new building. When we evaluate our changes in the C4 zone, we use four different uh, criteria that are shown up on your screen. Uh, the first criteria deals with the character of the community in light of the quality of construction proposed and the architectural compatibility of the proposed development with surrounding development. So the initial application that came in shows the uh, elevations of the proposed uh, building and they had a brick facade shown on the Highway 178 side and you can see some wainscot, brick wainscot down the sides and rear of the building and the rest of the building's uh, metal is the primary material and that generally aligned with what was shown in the Kruger Center for those seven industrial buildings. Um, now since that uh, meeting uh, to try to address a condition that was added by the Planning Commission, the applicants upgraded these elevations to what you see on the screen. So you still have the full brick facade along the Highway 178 side. They did expand these windows a little bit, which improves the look from Highway 178. They maintained the uh, wainscot along both sides and rear of the building, but they added windows along each side of the building as well as uh, some brick columns extending. So they did improve. This again was the original one that came in with the application back in December. And then you can see the improved version. That's the current proposal before you tonight. Um, criteria number two deals with the traffic conditions in the area. We're on Highway 178 in an area where MDOT uh, would control the driveway permit that would be granted as well as there would, whether there would be a need for any type of acceleration or deceleration lane, whether that would be warranted. If you recall, when we looked at this at the time of preliminary plat, there was some discussion whether or not that would be required and ultimately those conditions deferred over to MDOT, who's the permitting authority on that issue. Um, as far as our public utility facilities, we do have central water and sewer utilities that are available in the vicinity of the subject property and other matters with regard to public health, safety and welfare. Uh, we don't view that this would create any uh, hazard to those items. We'll have all of our plan reviews and inspections done by um, city inspection staff from planning, engineering, building and fire departments to ensure that all appropriate codes are enforced. This would be a sprinkled building due to the fact that it's over uh, 10,000 square feet in size. Our planning commission uh, reviewed this request at its uh, February 13th, 2024 meeting and upon finding that the proposal met the requirements of the zoning ordinance with respect to those four criteria in C4, they did by unanimous six to zero margin pass a motion 
recommending repeal of the Kruger Service Center project text and preliminary development plan and for approval or replacement with the Delta Regional Foundation Center project text and preliminary development plan. And then they did make it subject to the applicant applying full brick treatment around all four sides of the building. So rather than do that, the applicant um, in an attempt to move in the direction that the Planning Commission requested uh, offers this as an alternative and from the staff's perspective it does still seem to meet the general architecture in the uh, area so staff would recommend that the board would approve uh, Planning Commission's recommendation with this modified uh, elevations as part of the uh, project text. That concludes the staff presentation I believe I saw Mr. Lang in the audience and Ms. Dowd is here who was the architect on the project. Thank you, Mr. Gambone. Does the board have any questions regarding the staff report? Would the applicant like to add anything in addition to the staff report that's been presented? This is a public hearing. If you're here on behalf of this application, you're in favor of it. and. We would like to rise and speak in favor of it, come forward. If you're here in opposition, you oppose this and would like to speak against it, please rise and come forward. Seeing none, public comments are closed. Any additional questions from board or, or staff, excuse me, or motions? Mayor, let me make a comment. These, this Delta Regional Foundation that, that operates this has been an excellent partner with us on uh -huh. many projects, charitable projects across the city and been a real asset to them. And I know they're in a position, the building they're in is a rental building, that if the building got sold, they had a very limited time to get out. So this is a, an opportunity to them for to go ahead and build a building that they will own and be able to maintain their presence in the city. So I'm gonna make a motion to approve it with the Planning Commission recommendation with that modification that okay. was mentioned. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. I, I second your thanks to Delta Regional. I know Mr. Lang is here and uh, charitable donations can be made anywhere in the state and we thank you for making them in the city of Olive Branch uh, and being a good partner with us and the Community Foundation of North Mississippi. So you have made a motion for approval. Uh, Mr. Dixon, is there a second? Second. Mr. Wallace, second. I'm sorry. So, Ms. Aldridge, my apologies. I saw you lean back and heard her. Ms. Aldridge, I uh, second the motion. Uh, Mr. Dixon made the motion. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries as presented. Thank you. Moving to Planning Commission, new business. Consent item, uh, you see the consent item before you and you've had that in your packet. Any questions or motion on that consent item? Alderman at large, Collins, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Henderson. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries on consent item. Item number two, new business, consideration of application for a final plat for Robinson Crossing subdivision section H submitted by Joe Frank Lauderdale on behalf of Pleasant Hill Land and Development Property Owner. The request is to divide 7.32 plus or minus acres into nine lots with two common open spaces. The subject property is on PUD planned unit development district and is located on the south side of Church Road north of Parish Row East. Staff report. Yes, sir, you may recognize this um, project. This preliminary plat was approved by the Board of Aldermen back in April 18th of 2023. And this is a final plat to follow up on that preliminary plat application. And the final plat that you see before you that's been uh, drawn on top of the uh, aerial map for Robinson Crossing matches the uh, preliminary plat that you approved last year. It has nine half acre single family lots, uh, two common open spaces, as well as a uh, public right of way. The only, there was a slight change between the time of preliminary plat approval to what you see tonight. The uh, right of way for uh, Parish Row located here was actually um, widened out from 50 to 80 feet when you get between 
lots 356 and 357 as it moves up toward Church Road and you can see there's a slight jog uh, to the east. Um, at this point in time, Parish Row uh, right away has been paved and it is open to traffic and utilities have been installed. And this just shows you a photograph looking northward from where Parish Road used to end and turn into a dirt road toward uh, Church Road. So this line right here where you see the silt screen and a transformer box is about that line on the south side of uh, lot 350. So again, we're looking northward and you can see that the improvements have been completed. Um, this is a drawing that I showed you during last April's presentation and the approximate location of section H is right here in what was called area three of the PUD. And what you're seeing on the screen is the original master plan for Robinson Crossing that was started a couple decades ago. And you can see this area of the entrance is blown up a little bit over here to the right. And you can see how on the original master plan that road was intended to jog over there and then widen out. And then that would eventually uh, serve the next development over to the, uh, to the east, although it would not necessarily be covered under this plan development. This would be maybe another section of Robinson Crossing. Um, you may recall also that we did do some amendments to that PUD uh, project text approved uh, last September, and we did it in the form of a project text addendum. And what that addendum did was it fixed up a lot of the cross sections that had happened throughout the development that were a little bit squirrely that changed from section to section. So we got that all cleaned up a little bit in the, uh, in the PD addendum. And then in the project text also, we had a problem with the setbacks, namely it was the side setback. It used to say in that area three, you had to have two side setbacks of 15 feet. And that really wasn't the way earlier sections had developed. So we fixed the project text, looking back into the uh, previous sections that had already been approved as well. And that changed the side setbacks from 15 and 15 to 25 on one side and five feet on the other. So still 30 total, it just allowed there to be a little bit more shifting of the houses within those larger lots. And all those changes on the setbacks have been properly shown on the uh, final plat that's before you tonight. And area three also does require a minimum of a 3,000 square foot living area and there's a suggested recommended uh, condition of approval that would make sure that that note is added on to the final plat to help our building department make sure that they're meeting that minimum as they review house plans in this subdivision. And then I did show over here, this is a copy of the, uh, of the final plat and you can see how the road curving over cleaned up here on the uh, master plan and you can see how that works with the uh, boundary line with the uh, brown check line there. Our planning commission did review this at its March 12th, 2024 meeting and by unanimous seven to zero vote did pass a motion uh, recommending approval subject to the two conditions as noted. Um, one would be to add that plat note that the minimum house size is 3000 living square feet. And then secondly, we wanna make sure that our CCRs get recorded concurrently with the final plat and that concludes the staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Gambone. Any questions, board, regarding the presentation? Mayor, I'd like to make a comment. I think our planning department's done an excellent job in aligning this subdivision up, getting the streets lined up, the intersections uh, lined up. I drove through there yesterday. It's really going to finish out to be a very nice subdivision, very, very uh, well done. So I think our planning department's due credit for that as well. And I'm prepared to make a motion. To okay, to thank make you. Make a motion to approve. Motion for approval from Alderwoman Hamilton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Wallace. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, planning and engineering, the staff that worked on, on that report and that entire subdivision. Item three, consideration of application for a preliminary plat for Oak Park phase one, submitted by Nick Cronin, Civil Link LLC. On behalf of Mike Bailey, Oak Park LLC, property owner, the request is to create 12 commercial lots in one common open space from 19.88 <coughs> plus or minus acres. The subject property is on PUD plan unit development and is located on the southeast corner of Highway 302 and Hatch Crossroad. Report, please. 
Yes, sir. On your screen, you'll see the area that's denoted in the uh, yellow boundary line is about 71 acres, and it's on the southeast corner of uh, Highway 302 and Hacks Cross Road. And that 71 acres is the area that covers the entire Oak Park Town Center uh, plan development that the board approved um, on May 16th of 2023. And you may recall in that planned unit development, it had a total of four platting phases associated with it. So what we're looking at tonight is the preliminary plat for the first of the four phases. And that's shown right there across from uh, Woods Boulevard and that area is a little bit under 20 acres and the proposed subdivision divides it into 12 lots and on the title it said for commercial but these lots could actually be used also according to the PD for uh, um, offices or mixed use buildings where they could have some loft apartments over top of the ground level um, retail or, or office. Um, the lots range in size from uh, 0.69 acres located right there to the largest one which is 2.64 acres located about the central part of the development. Um, we do have a uh, 0.76 acre common open space that's designated for uh, stormwater detention facilities that's intended to be able to serve this entire first phase with uh, stormwater. And we have both public and private rights of way that are located here as well. This is the public uh, right of way system that's proposed to extend Woods Boulevard southward and there's a requirement to stub that out into the uh, uh, next property over and then this one would eventually in future phases go through and connect over to uh, Axe Cross and this shows you the private right of way that's located um, just on the east side of the property and again that could be a cul-de-sac or stub out at the end. Um, now what this approval would do tonight upon approval by the board of a preliminary plat, what that allows the uh, developer to do in turn is to essentially engineer the project in terms of the uh, roads and utility uh, infrastructure and stormwater infrastructure and they can in turn give those plans over to our city engineering department and under our uh, code provisions uh, Mr. Swims can approve those and they can actually go out and start building and doing all that flat work. They would have to come back to you at a later date after that work is done to be able to get a final plat approved and recorded before they could get a building permit to go vertical. So this is really about just starting that infrastructure out there. But it does show you we want to still take a look at that master plan that you approved last year and make sure that what we're doing here in terms of infrastructure is matching what you all spelled out last year in the uh, in the uh, project text approval and the PD approval and so this shows you the area that we're talking about tonight subdividing superimposed over the master plan and this is just a blow up of that area and so you can see generally we're we're matching the expected way that it was to propose to subdivide you have a very similar uh, layout in terms of the streets and you can see the stormwater detention is a little bit different. You can see on this plan that we're looking at, the master plan, you can see we had some stormwater over in the area where it's now proposed, but a couple of other smaller facilities located throughout the development. And sometimes that happens when you have a land planner that's doing a project initially from a planning perspective, as you get more into the engineering side of things, you make some adjustments to nail it down and, and, and clarify exactly what it is you need to serve the uh, project. Now, one thing that we probably can expect that hasn't changed too much from the master plan is that you may recall this property that's gonna be located here at the southwest corner of the new intersection of Woods and 302 um, is proposed for a uh, C store. And if you remember on the project text from last May, we did state in there two things. One is that if there were to be a C store here, you would have to have the pump and the canopy, fuel canopy back behind the sea store as opposed to out on Highway 302. And number two, it does state in the project text that that would in fact have to be a signalized intersection before such time mm -hmm. that you could do the sea store there. But I did want to make you aware and just reiterate those points. And going further, this just shows you a blow up of that um, 
master plan and try or blow up of the plat, I should say preliminary plat and seeing if it matches the master plan. And one thing that we want to look at, and this, this is an exact match, is that in our master plan, this is a drawing right out of it, you could see along the public rights of way, you had it planned for a 14 foot wide uh, landscape median or um, turn lane where you break up the median to be able to do left hand turns. And you can see these areas shown in green. It doesn't show up too, too well on the uh, slide, but those are all areas where you have uh, these medians that are planned. And so the way that this is proposed to be done through a planning perspective is these are in public rights of way, but they're landscape easements within that public right of way that would be dedicated over to a property owners association that would be formed for uh, the Oak Park development. So what that would mean is that rather than our Parks Department or Public Works Department being responsible for maintaining those landscape islands, that would be something that would be done by the uh, private sector and through that private association. And so you have a note here on the plat, which you can't read, but that's basically what the note says is that those landscape easements would be recorded in favor of that property was owner's association for the purpose of providing those landscape medians. And then here we have the uh, common open space area again for the detention pond and we have some language on the on the plat that basically states that that land would be dedicated straight to that property owners association for ownership and maintenance with its purpose being for uh, stormwater detention. And so we also have this area of uh, this this map was one again from the uh, from the master plan and this shows you in the gold area what was proposed to be the public rights away and these would be the streets that would be pretty much through streets through the project and then private rights of way would be the areas that kind of begin and end within the bounds of that project so this is a 50 foot private right of way that you can see reflected on the master plan and then also on the the, the plat and now here you don't see any type of uh, medians for landscape, you just have basically two cross section here. You can see you have the two travel lanes and then you do have landscaping along the side. And in this case, you could have the buildings right up to the back of the sidewalk. And so these areas are uh, shown in cross access easements. So these again are, are private driveways that kind of run through the property. So you can see you have a private easement through there. Now here's one where there's a little change from the master plan you can see that these buildings were originally proposed to be together and now plans have changed a little bit because we're showing now a cross access easement so cars would be able to drive through there. So that would be a little bit of a tweak from what you have originally on the master plan. And then those private ingress egress easements again move uh, north south. So you know, one general comment on this and you may remember we talked a little bit about this last uh, May when this came through is that when you do a big development like this, it's really important to have very strong uh, CCRs or private covenants out there because we have all of these requirements and I won't go through reading all of them, but these are just some examples of things that we have in the PD project text that are requirements on architecture and site design. And you don't get to you know, something that's gonna look like this picture without having a really good strong uh, cooperation between both, you know, City of Olive Branch Planning Department and Engineering Department as well as from a private developer's perspective. They really need to want to do this and part of the way they can do that is by setting up private architectural control within their CCRs and making sure that all of those standards that are gonna get you um, this picture are basically incorporated into those private covenants. And also, you know, one thing that's really important here is signage because you know, when you look at this picture, and this is just one of many in that book, you don't, you're not overwhelmed by signage. And so, you know, currently our signage regulations would allow much, much more than that does. So we want to make sure that um, we're following through in those private covenants with some pretty strong um, signage regulations. And so when you go to the uh, recommended conditions of approval from our planning commission, who did review this back on the uh, 12th, 
and did recommend approval by unanimous uh, margin. And by the way, I, there was an error in the staff report. I apologize for that. It erroneously said in our staff report that the vote was five to two on this item and it was in fact seven zero. So I do want to correct that for the record. But um, these conditions uh, six and seven both deal with the formation of that property owners association and making sure that these CCRs are really nailed down by the time we go to final plat on this. Because again, that will be of critical importance to make sure that we get all of that tied together. I, I would note one other condition um, dealing with the uh, sewer in this area and sewer kind of breaks two different ways and Andy can speak to it much more clearly than I can. But um, in this particular um, recommended condition number one, we're talking about providing that analysis and the, the applicant has been working with, with uh, Mr. Swims on that. And at this juncture, phase one is approved to tie into a sewer manhole that's located north of um, Highway 302 on Woods Boulevard and that sewage would be transmitted up to the Metro wastewater treatment plant. So that is reflected in that condition number one. That does conclude the staff presentation. Uh, Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Cambon. Board, any questions regarding the report? Yes. The CCR, is that what we discussed before? Is, this, is that a, a guess where we see one thing and then kind of do it right? We see something different? Is well, that kind of address? Is that what the address is like? Well, we hope to. That's one of the tools. Um, you know, we you really need to have, if, if we want to get something like, you know, we've got planned for cascades or like you're seeing come out of the ground, in Silo Square over in South Haven, you know, it really takes a, a developer who's willing to, you know, commit to that as much as it does, you know, a city that's willing to enforce that. So you really have to have both layers of enforcement, both public enforcement of this, this PD and also private enforcement where, you know, we want to make sure that if they're marketing this to someone that they would come into the door knowing that, yes, we want this to look like these pictures. Some, some of the applicants have brought pictures of renditions of where the same type property has been built in other cities and that, that has been real helpful. And you know what I'm talking about, because sometimes there's been some where we've seen you, you propose a development and then you look in there and you're like, it doesn't look like this. Uh, I've, I've seen it one too many times throughout <laughs> the years and so we'll do every tool that we have at our disposal to try to make sure that we get what's pictured. I had a, a question on the right-of-way, Mr. Gambone. You've mm -hmm. got the full width of the right-of-way dedicated and then the landscaped areas with a landscape easement dedicated to the POA for them to maintain and plant yes, those sir. areas. Is that the same way, a song that it was done on Forest Hill Irene and Kirk Farms? Is that typically the way we would do a... Well, a full width right away with a private landscape easement with interior to we it? did we did this um, Kirk Farms hasn't gone to a platting stage yet right but um, is, but is that what's contemplated in their text or it, or it, in other areas in town or is, I guess it, there's there's yes, always sir. more than one way to do it and this there's yes, pros sir. and cons to, to each I guess the, what we did north you, you see those landscape medians that are on the north side of Woods Boulevard north right. of highway 302 <laughs> There we had originally done it very similar to this and then we ended up tweaking it because there were some changes that they wanted to make where the driveway connections were going to go. Yeah. So we ended up doing kind of what you might call a floating easement, but it was basically giving them uh, maintenance responsibilities over the medians that were in the, in the okay. right of way. So this was pretty, very the similar. Full width is dedicated. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Any additional questions? I did have one, this may be Mr. Swims, your area of expertise. If there is a traffic signal that comes to Woods Boulevard for the convenience store, obviously that's at the will and pleasure, if you will, and design of MDOT. Will they have to approve that before anything can go in the C store? Um, yes, sir. That means any, any approval for a signal is going to have to have a warrant signal analysis done at that intersection. They'll have to show that there's adequate traffic, I guess, to, to warrant it. So. That would come first. And who will bear the expense of that signal at some point? The developer? 
um, if typically you're going to you're going to look and see what kind of impact that development is is putting on the need for that signal to go in place. So at some point in time, as this develops, that can be a part of the conversation. I think. Okay. In other words, Barring, negotiable. <laughs> Barring Mr. Gill's question, since it's so close to the Hacks Cross intersection, would that not, if it was two lights there, would that not alleviate some of the piling up right there at the one intersection by breaking it backwards, like keeping the traffic from jamming this way you have them staged? If, if, you, if you put signalization too close together, a lot of times it can cause problems. They, there are ways to do it. You know, we've got some in the city itself, actually over there like on uh, 305 near 78 where you've right. got signal, 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 signal. Um, they do cause uh, some issues. So MDOT would look at that very closely before they tried to put signals that, that, um, that close together. Just curious, would a, would a roundabout make sense there and could it be done or is that just totally out of the question? At, on 302? No, it, it would's there in 302, yeah. Uh, I think that would be a, a stretch for them to consider a, a roundabout on a road with that, that kind of traffic capacity. Anything additional? I, I would like to add one thing that I noticed that I want to just point out, since we have detention in this development all shown going in one location, um, that often can work fine. Um, I wanna make sure that when you, when you look at a site like this, you often have um, drainage areas that are draining in different locations. If that single detention area doesn't work, that just may be something I'd want them to be aware of that 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 may be something I'm concerned. I wouldn't want a lot of a lot of drainage going to the south, them meeting the detention requirements overall with that pond, but then there being an increase for for flows going to the south and causing any issues. That's just an example, but um, I wanted that noted as something to uh, make them aware of. Would it help the old road, or is he good? No, he, he, can, he, can, he can make that adjustment before it comes back for final plow. Anything additional or any motions if we're at that point? I have a motion to approve. Mr. Dickerson, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Wallace. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Motion carries item four, consideration of application for a preliminary <laughs> plat for Williams Place subdivision submitted by Shea Skeen, Skeen Engineering on behalf of John and Patrice Williams, property owners. The request is to divide 9.08 plus or minus acres into three residential lots. The subject property is zoned AR, Agricultural Residential District, and is located just southwest of the intersection of Church Road <coughs> East and Highway 305 at the northern end of Trinity Grove Drive. Staff report, please. Thank you, sir. Before you, is a request to consider the preliminary plot for this William Place subdivision, which will consist essentially of three proposed lots. Uh, the property lies between Trinity Grove to the south and Trinity Park to the north and, and the west. Uh, the property is currently vacant. It is Zone A, our agricultural residential district which requires that lots be a minimum one acre in size. Uh, the applicant, the three lots proposed, the, the smallest lot there is over 1.87 acres. So it meets zoning requirements. Utilities, water, sewer, uh, gas lines are currently available within the vicinity of the site. Sewer is not available on Trinity Grove Drive, it is available on Oak Grove Boulevard. The developer will have to extend that sewer from the intersection right there through Trinity Grove, Dr Grove Drive into the proposed uh, subdivision. That would be the responsibility of the developer. Um, you have Trinity Grove Drive is currently stubbed out into this property and what a developer will be doing will be to basically build that cul-de-sac to provide street frontage access to the three proposed lots. 
this is a subdivision as proposed. You have that 50 feet radius cul de sac, smallest lot, lot one, being 1.87 acres, lot two, 3.7, and lot three, 3.51. These lots really, to some extent, need to be this large because of the, the topography. The buildable area is pretty small. The topography out there is not the best. The Planning Commission at its meeting on March 12th did you review this application and unanimously recommended approval subject to these conditions one to six, which are pretty standard. The next um, application that will have to be submitted by the developer will be the civil set of construction plans as indicated there on condition number four for review and approval by the city engineer. Once the infrastructures have been constructed, the final plan would have to be submitted for your approval and recorded by the developer before building permits can be issued for any house to be constructed in the subdivision. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. take that one and board you have a memo in your packet for this uh, you had a bid from uh, Struthers uh, that is uh, as noted in your packet uh, recommended for rejection and that is required uh, by state law uh, and then the recommendation for approval is to the next low bidder which is Pelican in the amount of one hundred nineteen thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars fourteen cents and the mayor I think Either I or Mr. May, either one can answer questions if the board has any. Any questions? I'd like to make a motion. Make a mo motion. <laughs> Floor's open. I'd like to make a motion to approve. You sure you want to approve all that beautiful <laughs> equipment in that playground? I'll have a place to play. Uh, understood. You'll be there when it goes up, Ms. Yes. Hamilton, I have He's no so doubt. Excited. Motion to approve by Ms. Hamilton. Is there a second? So, second. second. Did you say second? So, Mr. Collins said second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you all. Motion carries. That's going to be an awesome ad. Item two, consideration of bids open March 11th, 2024 for preservation treatments project. Mr. Swims? Uh, as the board would recall, last year we, we tried to do pavement preservation. We ended up rejecting the bids. We did it again this year, uh, but we, we made several modifications, I think, that made it more attractive. We still only got one contractor this year. Um, and it was Vance Brothers, uh, but they came in with better prices, so we stay within our, um, our budget, I think, with what we're trying to do. So I'm excited about that. I think that's going to be great. That's going to allow us to go and do micro seal and double micro seal on a few of our roads. And if you all recall, the, uh, the roads that we were considering was Highway 178 within the city limits that the that city maintains. Um, College Road from 305 going westbound to the city limits and Old Goodman Road um, going from East 302 to West 302. Um, those are the roads that we're gonna be doing as a part of this project. So we're recommending um, Vance Brothers with this bid of $1,351,240. And uh, uh, if, the, if the board chooses to move forward with it. And if approved anticipated start time for that we're approximate? Um, we're waiting to hear from them in a few weeks. We should know more certain, but I think it would be for certain in the summer, uh, spring or summer. So not too far down the road. Gotcha. We would push and hope for spring, but we'll, we understand they've got a schedule as well. Any questions on this preservation? Um, no, it goes from um, the overpass at 302 and goes south to just south of uh, Public Works in that area. So that's the area that we're, we'll be doing the um, micro seal on. That's right. The part that's not maintained by the state, that the city maintains. Any 
Motion, motion to approve by Mr. Wallace. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Henderson. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Consideration of bids open March 11, 2024 for Pleasant Hill Road Widening Project North. Mr. Swims. Yes, sir, we got um, two, two bids on this particular project. This is north of 302. It's where we're trying to widen it out, um, basically from um, just north of Windstone to uh, north of Pleasant Hill Elementary. So it was a fairly easy project for us to widen out. Several sections had been widened out through there. Um, we got good bids. Um, Phillips Contracting came in with the, with the lowest uh, and best bid that we're recommending with a base bid of $828,534.50. They also had an alternate bid, which was to add the actual sidewalk onto the project for $93,840. Um, and so we're recommending that we go with both. They both came in below our engineer's estimate, which was uh, something we haven't seen a lot of. And so um, we're recommending going with both the base bid and the alternate bid with Phillips Contracting. Thank you. Mr. Swims, is that 80-20, is that uh, um, I MPO 80-20? I believe that's correct. It, okay. It's not MPO. Okay. I think it was a straight state appropriation and a capped okay. amount. Anything over that, I think, is the city's okay. responsibility. We've got a lump sum. Right. Thank you. Any, any questions? Motion approved. Motion to approve by Alderman at Large Collins yes. is second. Ms. Hamilton, Alderman Hamilton. All, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. New business consideration of recommendation to approve a contract amendment with Neil Schaefer Incorporated in the amount of $7,050, increasing the contract amount from $135,725 to $142,775 for professional engineering services to provide modifications for the transfer of M. WCI grant funds from East Area Project 3 to the Lick Creek Interceptor Sewer Project. Andy? We've got um, actually items one and two, but this first item that's on here, they're both related to each other. So we're taking the MCWI funding uh, that we had set aside for the East Area Project 3 and moving it to the Lick Creek Interceptor Sewer Project, which is ready to go. Um, so we we're asking to pay the, um, the, the consultant um, Seven thousand and fifty dollars to make the um, all the modifications necessary for it. Thank you. Any questions or motions? Mr. Collins, motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Earhart, all in favor? Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Item two: consideration of. Recommendation to approve MCWI sub award agreement modification number one on MDEQ agreement number 118 2 CW 5.5, transferring MWCI grant funds from East Area Project 3 water and sewer annex areas to the Lick Creek Interceptor Sewer Project for the awarded amount of $918,993.49. And as I mentioned, this is this is a part of the same thing. Uh, item one was uh, this is the the actual document we're asking for um, to be signed by the mayor um, for the transfer of those funds. Thank you. Questions or motions? So moved. Mr. Dickerson, motion. Second, Second Mr. Collins. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. <coughs> motion carries. Item three. Consideration of recommendation to approve task order number 2B with Neil Schaefer Incorporated in an hourly rate and non, not to exceed amount of $7,500 transferring MCWI grant funds from East Area Project 2 to the water treatment plant presently under design by Fisher and Arnold Incorporated. Mr. Swims. This is uh, very similar to the first two items except this would be taking the MCWI funding um, that we currently have for um, East Area Project 2 and moving it to um, the, um, the water treatment plant that we're trying to do at the Craft Road um, water tower. Um, that's uh, currently under contract with Fisher and Arnold. We've gone over with them. We think we can meet the deadlines. They're pretty stringent, so this is, stringent, so this is a, um, 
uh, asking Neil Schaefer, who's been dealing with all of our MCWI funding, to also make the modifications to move that funding for that project. Thank and you. thank you. I will okay. mention too that this one does not have um, does not have the um, aw sub award modification yet that the, the first one did. We'll bring that to you soon. Okay, thank you. Did I hear a motion? Yes. Mr. Wallace made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Hamilton. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Number four, consideration of recommendation to accept the grant from NRCS in the estimated amount of $915,000 with the city's estimated portion in the amount of $255,000 and NRCS portion in the estimated amount of $660,000 for Nola Hole Creek erosion issues downstream of Malone Road and Pleasant Hill Road and authorize Mayor Adams to sign documents as necessary for said grant. And Mayor, just one point of clarification. The agenda has itself, the paper agenda has been corrected to reflect that this would be an application for the grant, not an acceptance of the grant. Thank you. So that if, if there is a motion, it'd be to complete the application for the grant. That's right. Mr. Collins, motion. Is there a second? Second. Aldridge. Ms. Aldridge, second. All in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to leave regular session with the intentions of going into executive session to discuss items one through nine? So moved. Motion by Mr. Earhart, second by Mr. Wallace. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to go in executive session with the intention of discussing personnel matter in the fire department, personnel matters in the gas maintenance department, personnel matter in the park department, personnel matter in the police department, personnel matter in the street department, personnel matter in the water billing department, personnel matter in the water maintenance department, economic development discussion and acquisition disposition of property for utility easements and county nail road right away. Is there a motion to go in executive session for those nine items? Ms. Henderson motion second was Mr. Wallace all in favor? Aye. All opposed we are in executive session.